Alright, so today's video is on this new 22 I picked up. It's a Remington 550-1 or 1. It's a semi-automatic 22. This one was made in December of 1947 according to the uh, barrel stamp on it. As you see, semi-automatic. What makes this gun interesting is that it will fire it says it right there, but it's upside down. Short, long, and long rifle in semi-automatic mode. I do have another gun that shoots the three, a semi-automatic, but it only fires long rifle in semi-automatic. The rest is basically acts like, adds like the rest it basically acts like a bolt action. but it is designed to fire the three. I'll start with the disassembly of this rifle as a video and uh, we'll go from there. Alright, disassembly is pretty easy on this toy. First things first, you grab stock. It's tough with this size. tripod here, but let's try to get this done for you. Alright, and then you just pull the stock off and put it aside. Next, I'm just going to remove the magazine rod or whatever you want to call it. Alright, so this is the 22. Pretty interesting how it works. This here, when you pull up on it, it raises the 22s. There's a little spring. There's two of these things here spring in between is what gives it the force to hold up the round and to be pushed down when the bolt goes forward anyway so let's start this by making sure you could decock it unfortunately this one seems to not have much play so decocking it actually I might be striking the chamber with it anyways this is a safe First things first, you unscrew this here. Get a nice spring, double spring. Next, you grab the bolt, you pull it right to the back. Once it's pulled right to the back, you pull on the bolt handle. And it's lined up to that larger opening. And now, all you have to do is get something in there to help release the bolt. I could do it with my fingers here. This is your bolt. From there, your firing pin comes out. You could check that for damage. It's not shooting, might be a problem with that. Anyways. goes in here, you sort of have to let it go and hope it goes where it's supposed to. Like that. Anyways. The difference between the one and the 550 made before is that it's only got one extractor there instead of two. The ejector is built into the side of the receiver. Alright, a lot of people talk about the floating chamber in these things jamming up. This right here, by the way, is a floating chamber. It moves back and forth. 
So when you're firing shorts, it actually moves back a bit, adds extra weight to the cartridge, I think, and that's what pushes back the bolt far enough to cycle it. Which also means that should have some of the subsonics that fire reliably out of this too. So you have a quieter 22. Alright, but what happens is people shoot long rifle out of it long enough that uh, it tends to jam up and then not work properly. So what people say is to, I've seen a few videos, just to play with the thing back and forth after you put oil or solvent or whatever in it, just to make it move back and forth properly. There is one way to do it, I guess you say properly figured it out pretty much by accident trying to take this thing apart what you do is you grab the screw that's here which is the one that holds the barrel on the stock unscrew it, it shouldn't be that difficult now that that's off inside, I don't know if you'll see it, but there's a little screw which holds a magazine tube on that aluminum thing that's there the, I guess you'd call it cartridge guide. You pull down the uh, the feeder on here, and then you take the whole tube, and you could push it back. Now you see it's been moved back, forward, back. Anyways, that allows you. I'm just gonna tap it to get it to drop out, but. it there. Let's see if I can get it to fall out without there you go. That there's your floating chamber. And there's the rest of your barrel in there. This allows you to clean it out much more effectively than just trying to put stuff in it. And is relatively simple to do. I can't see anyone building a gun like this for the price that they're worth nowadays because they are well made anyways so we'll put this back in the same way we took it out basically ensuring that this little ramp is on the bottom because that's what the feed ramp is for this gun so you just put it in should have had a tool for this but we'll see if we can get this in to line up properly there. I'm just going to shake it into place a bit. There you go. Now you see the floating chambers back in. This you could just pull the spring out by pulling down and out. It's a big spring. It's a pain to put back in, but it's not that difficult just if you want to properly clean all this this is when you run all the oil, cleaning solvent, whatever you need to get the gunk out of it make sure everything's lined up properly underneath and now you're ready to reassemble it so first thing is these are out of the way so you could pull this forward now that it's pulled forward you don't have to worry about your let me line this up first and I'll pull it forward to lock it between the two lips there. Now that it's forward, you're going to line up the hole here. And put your screw back in. Don't need to make this super tight, it's not designed to be overly tightened. Alright, next you take your bolt, place it in, and you give it a push 
pushed out on this because there's a feed piece in there that that's where that that's what makes the feed lips or the this piece right here move up and down it rides into here anyways so you take it put it back in the gun nothing should force you to basically force any pieces in a little bit of light pressure should do the trick for pretty much everything on this gun you want to pull the trigger and that's back in now we want to line it up so we line that up there's only one way you're going to get this in if you look it should be the top part flat part goes up top after that you'll see you can't move it and you push it forward now before you put it together make sure that the feeder is moving which it is you want to pull on the trigger helps if you put this in first a little bit you'll feel some pressure once it goes in now I fired the trigger well I fired the gun so that the bolt went uh, so that the firing pin went forward now you just put this on tighten it not so much you don't really have to tighten too much and now test it again to make sure everything works everything seems to be working well take it place it back on its stock and hopefully it lines up properly so I don't have to spin this for three hours it seems to have lined up tighten it back on here snug but don't have to over tighten anything as long as it's not moving on top you're good and that's how you put your gun back together I'm going to do a function check for you using some dummies alright so we loaded just like anything else these are dummies as you could tell they aren't made to pull a trigger supposedly with but for function testing they do the job so load these six in when I got the gun the original owner said that for whatever reason he assumed that it was because of uh, the old owner only firing shorts out of it it wouldn't feed 22 long rifle anymore so he sold it to him he said it's probably fixable what I did was give it a good cleaning made sure everything was okay and then uh, tried it out I haven't shot it yet I can't tell you how that is but we'll see how well it cycles right now so it should cycle pretty well there anyways so that's how this 22 works and I hope you enjoyed this disassembly and reassembly video of it if you have any questions please feel free to comment it is a new gun to me I haven't done too much with it so I might not be able to answer but I'll try my best thanks for watching